And now, Deborah Cobelt. Thanks so much, Kurt, for uh, that introduction. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in to our Little Italy of Los Angeles podcast. And on the phone with us right now is my friend, Bruno Serrato. Thanks for being here, Bruno. Buongiorno, buongiorno. Viva la pasta, viva l'Italia. Viva l'Italia. We've got a lot to talk about. So um, Bruno is a well-established, amazing chef and founder of the uh, Anaheim White House Restaurant and also the Caterina's Club, which was named after his late mother, Caterina, where he feeds literally thousands, that's thousands, of young kids every day who are homeless, who are somewhat impoverished. Um, and he does a lot more, so we're gonna get into that. He's also um, came here from Italy many years ago. We're gonna get into that story as well. Uh, thank you, I'm so excited to have you on, Bruno. Well, thank you, it's excited for me too. But you know, it's funny things today is a, in a religious um, point of view is like a San Caterina of Siena, the protector of Italy. And my mom was named after her. And today is the holy day of San Caterina di Siena. And she's the protection of Italian. And I feel like perfect thing to be involved together in interview, protecting mama, protecting the people of the virus, protecting everybody else, not only the Italian people, but the world. That's, that's beautiful, actually. And you're right. What a beautiful, I would say, coincidence. But there's no coincidence. She's protecting you. She's protecting Italy. She's protecting all of us. That's really beautiful. So we'll have a good interview. Let's talk a little bit about now. Um, I mean, look, you've been named, uh, what, one of the 10 heroes of the year from CNN. You've been knighted by the Italian government. Uh, the Pope has recognized you. I mean, Bruno, um, all because of what you've done and your charitable work with the kids um, where you're located. So tell me a little bit about Caterina's Club and what you've been doing in particular since COVID-19 to help the community. Well, yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, I did recognize around the world, I do speech all over the world. I do Brazil, Dubai, I went to um, the Vatican, obviously with Pope Francis, uh, the United Nations. But all the award, which I've maybe received 2,000 of them, they all dedicated to my mom and to the kids. Mama Caterina, because she's the one then exactly 15 years ago, when she flew from Verona, my hometown in Italy, to California to visit me, we went to a boys' girls' club. It was April 18, 2005. I mean, our anniversary was just uh, 10 days ago. Uh, 15 years anniversary of Caterina's club was founded. With the mama, she's a, she's a saint herself, I do believe. One day she's going to be a saint because everything I do, I do on her passion and love and faith. And we went to the Boys Girls Club and there were a, a little kid eating potato chips, something normal that kids can do. But the director that day said, no, Bruno, that could be his only dinner. I said, why? So we have a lot of family which are on the poverty line, live in the motel room, section eight. I mean, tonight he could go home and maybe don't even have dinner. I translate in Italian to mom because she does not speak English. And first thing she says as an Italian mom, which loves children, she said, why don't you feed him pasta? And that's not the first wow. day. Just with this... one simple word from an Italian mom, feed the kid pasta. I mean, it doesn't take too long to to understand what I mean, right? Because if you go to Italy, if you go to somebody's home, mom is there, grandma is there, they will say, manja, 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 manja. That's what- and All talking. day, all day. It's a manja, manja, manja. And it's home, of course. So mom, yes. mom said, Bruno, feed the kids. And you took the challenge on, right? So you went back to the Anaheim White House restaurant. What'd you do? Yeah, and we went to, my mom and I went there, went to the kitchen, cooked pasta, bring to the club that day. Uh, after one hour or two, everybody eat, the kids enjoy, love it, they went home. But it didn't stop there. Because with my mom, it's like, well, what happened the next day? And the day after. So I did the day after, the day after, the day after. We've been doing that for 15 years, every single day, Monday to Friday. But Let's talk about how many kids you feed, Bruno, Monday through Friday. Because it's a little astonishing. People are going to say, wait, what? Go yeah. ahead. Okay, at the original, we used to do two, three hundred kids a day. Okay, mm -hmm. they go up to there. 
after I got picked up by CNN, the top CNN hero, a lot of people saw me and asked more help. Uh, before the coronavirus happened, I mean, a month and a half ago, two months ago, we were at 5,000 plates of pasta every single day. You know, Bruno, I've said this to you before. I can hardly get dinner on the table. I'd love to know how you're feeding 5,000 plates of pasta a day. It, it's it's, it's uh, terrible. I know a lot of people are kind of overwhelmed for the number, but I say it's not, it's not that difficult. Why? We are in, a, we serve in pasta in 90 locations, 30 city. Think about 30 city, 90 locations, around Orange County, LA County. We have one in San Bernardino County, one in San Diego County, and like I said, Long Beach and LA County, right? I mean, yeah. uh, we start early in the morning, uh, before coronavirus, there were a couple of guys, there were three, four people in the kitchen. And we used to cook like two, three hundred pounds of pasta every single morning. And that one, when it's cooked, we make the, prepare the tomato. We also cook chicken because I wanted the kids to get the full nutrient meal. What I mean, they get the carb from the pasta, the fiber for the tomato and vegetable that we blend together, and the chicken that we roast it cut in small pieces, mix, mix it in a pasta, and we have the full meal. I mean, uh, we have like four, five, six people in the kitchen cooking all day long to prepare that. We put them in a container, in the container they call hot box. They stay hot for six hours, but we we'll get like 30, 40, 50 of them. We get two vans plus some extra driver, and we have all the driver who's coming to the restaurant. My two, three driver, they go to certain location, so we go all the way down to San Clemente, Long Beach, Buena Park, Newport, Worldwide, and we go to other places. But we also have some club who send their own van, pick up the past in my restaurant. I mean, it's like between eight to nine hours, we prepare in 5,000 meal of pasta to the kids for years. Coronavirus come, we, I don't stop. I was, I was scared, I said, what are we going to do? Can we still be in the kitchen and cooking? I was very, very concerned about the safety. Can I do that? Do I like bring virus to the club? Well, some boys girls club closed down the, the, the club. Right, the facility. And that really disappointed me big time. Uh, why are you closing your boys girls club today? Then we needed the most today. I mean, I was really, really upset. I was like, no way, I will not do that. I want to be on the front line and everything. And I get my, my crew, the Caterina's crew, I say, okay, well, let's call other people, the ones that are open. Thank God some club are open. One of the Anaheim is open two, three days a week. Long Beach, big one, there's 10 locations. So now, Bruno, we need, we need. It. I mean, I was really on the front line with my crew and more people start to call us and say, please, can we get some help from you? Please, I mean, the one who closed, too bad and sad. The one who closed don't deserve any support because they closed the door when they needed the most. The kids- yeah, but I, I think they had to for help, you know, because of the health. Uh, the, the, first week, the first week, yes. After okay. that, no. Because matter of fact, what we do to certain club, boys, girls club, we deliver the pasta. We don't go inside. We leave them outside of the door. They pick it up. They clean it. They pick it inside. And it's a safety issue that's taking care. My crew do not go without mask, without glove, without cleaning the shoes in the container. I mean, you can do it if you want. I mean, I I've, I've, I've also seen, sorry, Bruno, but I've also seen people literally driving up and you're giving them the food, right? You've got on masks, you've got on gloves, you've got on everything. Where are you doing that? So now word is out everywhere. That everywhere. People we, do that, uh, from... we do that uh, on Tuesday. We do the Boys Girls Club Manzanita in Anaheim. Uh, the director, my friend, uh, as you know, Anaheim was the first facility, the first pasta, the first kid. He said, Bruno, we do drive through. I said, what's well, it good? At least I can cook my pasta and give to the people. I mean, I go on Tuesday, we there for... I think from two afternoon, drive come at three to five, and we give a two, three, four container of pasta per family. I mean, when I give a two of them, is to serve six people. So how and many it, total? How many total are you serving now since COVID nineteen? Right now, okay, let's give us some good number. If it, before I was cooking 
1,000 pounds of pasta a week. Now I cook seven, 8,000 of pasta, a pound of pasta a week. Plus, you're making the pasta, you're making the sauce, you're making the chicken, you're, you're, you're putting it in the tins and sealing it and, and delivering it. That's a lot of people. I, I, I don't know how you do it. How big is your crew? And how are you affording to do this, Bruno? Okay, well, Katerina is a foundation. I received right. donation all year long. And I mean, we do the gala, we have a pasta ton. And uh, you know, K564 AM is a big radio. They give us the, our biggest fundraise with pasta at the end of December. So, I mean, I have the purpose. So, where do you get the pasta? I say, why? Well, I do with the K5, the biggest pasta ton of the year. We collect That's beautiful. Pounds. Yeah, 100,000 pounds of pasta. Without that, I couldn't do it. But thank yeah. God we have that. We have the tomato sauce. I mean, with all of this, in donation during the year from my gala event, the speech, donation online, we have the money that I can pay the crew to work because the crew for Katerina's club need to be paid. They work full time. It's, it's incredible. Money. You know, but Bruno, this has not been your only setback. You've had many. Another one was, what, was it two years ago? Oh, my heart broke. Your Anaheim White House restaurant that you built since the day you got here, right, you started as a busboy and you ended up owning the restaurant. It burned down to the ground. My heart broke when I saw you crying. I, none of us knew what to do, but we all kicked into gear, raised money, and you were up and running again. I think, what, the next week you were already feeding kids, right? Come on. Like the day that the, re the, the restaurant was on fire on February 4, 2017, on February 5th, 2017, I was serving the kids. Wow. I never stopped during the fire, even the day after. Corona, the same thing too. The next day I was on the phone with Katerina's crew. Okay, everybody shut down. Where are they open and we can feed the kids? On Friday, just to give an example, last Friday we did uh, one of the last drive through because if I open on food to go, I cannot do the rest anymore. I would have to go somewhere. We do drive through on the parking lot of the restaurant. I open the gate at 2 30 in the afternoon. 270 cars lined up to come to the parking lot of the restaurant. It's an average of four, five, six people, eight people per family per car. I mean, we feed them cooked pasta, uncooked pasta. I give them a three pound of flour that they can bake at home. I have a line age company which will give me some. Uh, frozen pizza a week ago. Panini, Kobe gave me some sandwich to take them home. I take everything that people give to me. In fact, this Friday is the last one I do at the restaurant. I order 600 pizza from Zero Zero Pizza in Anitton Beach. I call the guy, he gave me an amazing deal because he knows what I do. I said, give me 600 pizza, then I can feed 600 people just with the pizza alone. But I'm going to get 600 containers of pasta in, in two hours. Then you have 1,200 meal in two hours alone at the right. rest. Without counting, or oh, somebody call me, line age, say, Bruno, do you want some crab? I mean, crab is not cheap, right? He say, I have 3,000 pounds of crab. I say, yes, bring them to the restaurant. I'm going to put them on single bag and give to each family. And obviously, they don't have that every day, but when people have something, they have to get rid of it or because they, they can't sell it anymore. They call you. They call, they call you. me. And they even if I you. don't do the drive through, all my driver, when they go to all those locations, I give the food and get donated to me, to them, to deliver to facility. That's the reason we feed so many people. We're very excited about the Little Italy, um, Los Angeles, which is located down in San Pedro, which is all Long Beach, the whole district because it's really honoring um, the authenticity of Italian people like you and Italian Americans like all of us, which is very exciting. Um, I wanna hear a little bit about your story briefly about when you came over, because I know you came over just like a lot of people, with just a couple of hundred bucks in your pocket, right? More than today. Yeah, more <laughs> than <t> <laughs> Because you're giving it all away, Bruno. But um, why? Because you had a dream or mama told you to come? What was the reason why you came? No, it, 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 it's, it's my background. Uh, mom and dad, uh, my, my grandfather, the father of Mama Catherine, was a shepherd. During World War II, war destroyed no food, worse than today. People come to my grandfather, ask for milk and cheese from the sheep. 
always say yes. My grandfather was well known that when he died, they said the funeral was thousands of people because mm -hmm. he always gave her free food to poor people. No much cheese and milk, but then it was a big deal. In 51, mom and dad left to France to start a family to work the farmland because they didn't have any job in Italy. They pick up beets and potatoes for 15 years. They have seven children. That means seven kids pick up beets and potatoes. They could afford it to uh, a family, right? But to have mm -hmm. seven children, and, uh, probably, I keep saying then we didn't have, they didn't have any protection and kids were just born every year, right? But I had the people, I still remember, they give clothes to my mom and dad for us children. People give them food to mom and dad for us children. Oh, wow. Mom, mom cooked pasta every single day. I eat pasta every day. I eat leftover bread and milk every single night. We wow. grew up poor, but guess what? I had no idea I was poor. With my no. brother and sister, they are all around my age, we say, did you know that we were poor when we were young? Well, because you really weren't poor, Bruno. No. I mean, you no. weren't. You had family you have pasta, and love. Yeah. You have love, you have family, we have a bit of pasta for lunch. I mean, yeah. when my mom was here 15 years ago, mm -hmm. she's the one who, I didn't think about that. Not because they want to, but they never came to my mom. She's the one saying, but if he doesn't have dinner, why don't you give him pasta? It's automatically for her soul, for her love, for my mom, for an Italian mom. And say, yes, and how can I stop? How can I stop during the fire? How can I stop during the recession? How can I stop during 9 11? How can I stop during the coronavirus? It would not make sense to stop well, when the kids needed the most. I was, I was, you know, because I follow you on social media and almost every day you said, I can't stop. I can't. What propels you, Bruno? I mean, come on. I mean, I, I say sainthood is in your future and I'm not kidding. But what <laughs> propels you to do that, really? To do this every day, to go in and feed other people before yourself. Well, uh, today, today, I tell you, today I post something on my social. Is a photo of Mother Teresa of Calcutta holding a baby. Okay. And she said, there's a, there's a note on my Facebook and uh, Instagram, and say, if you cannot feed, feed a thousand, just feed one. I saw that. I start with one. I didn't start with a thousand. I tell people, I start with one pasta, one kid, one location, one city. Start with one. Tomorrow you don't know how many you will have so. This is a great point, Bruno, because a lot of times people are a little overwhelmed, right? They're like, how can I really help? I mean, you know, a lot of people are doing so much. Just to your point and Mother Teresa's point, start with one. I did, a, I did a speech know. in Italy to different, uh, when I launched my book, it was called Power of Pasta. I did a lot of speech yeah. with a lot of students. And uh, one was elementary school. All the kids were like seven, eight years old. He had told them, one kid stand up, you say, well, my mom gave a pasta every night to an older lady. I look at him and say, tonight, when you go home, give a hug to your mom on Chef Bruno and tell her, thank you for serving one pasta to an older lady. Do it one. I tell people, don't start with a thousand, you'll be crazy. I no. start with one. <laughs> I mean, you you know right don't don't do a thousand it'll make know. you crazy i mean i went from one to 50 to 200 to 300. i remember during the recession when the boys girls club director said bruno i have a problem i said what's the problem the kids doubling i said oh my god i said i cannot double the pasta I say i'm getting losing my restaurant my restaurant lost 50 percent. i lost one million dollar sales in one year i was losing the rest i was losing my house when was this? Was this back in like 2007, 2008? 2008, 2009, 2010. That was mm -hmm. years for me. But double the pasta. I mean, from 300 to 600, and it went to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Now we have 5,000 a day up to pre coronavirus. But from 5,000, it went to 25,000 meal a day because we donated uncooked pasta. But the thousand of pounds for people, they, the one who can cook at home can cook at home. Let me ask you this. What year did you come here, Bruno, to the United States? 1980. And you came because you had a dream, right? You wanted to come and, and do what? Make money? And, want, and... No, 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 no. I didn't come to stay. I came to learn English because I speak oh. French. Like I told you, my mom and dad live in France for 16 years. I mean, right. I, I went to school there too. 
I speak fluently French, fluently Italian, because I'm Italian, obviously. And uh, my sister married a GI, a German army, my brother-in-law, uh, living in California, Colorado, said, do you mind if I come over for two, three months? I want to learn English. And when I go back to Italy, I can work in a resort area and make more money oh. because I speak to English. But I didn't know it. that about you, Bruno. I did not know that about you. Okay, so you came here to speak English. And is that when you worked at the restaurant? Okay, the first week, I tell you, the first week, it's okay. How can I learn English? Let me watch TV. I remember I was watching the show, uh, Laverne and Shirley, right? Is show? <laughs> you remember the show? Yeah, I was so watching. Funny. I was watching that show and also I love Lucy. It was another show. And I was listening to the, the record because we didn't have a CD then, the record of Barbara Streisand. Why Barbara Streisand? Because Barbara Streisand is a very clean English language when she sings. Like, you know, when, uh, for me to learn English from somebody who has a clear English voice and Barbara Streisand when she sings memory, you know, stuff like that. For me, no. Yeah, it was easy to catch the English. That's why I was listening there. But after two weeks, I look at my sister and say, I've been working since the age of 14 years old, 15 hours a day. I cannot stay home, watch TV and listen to music to English. <laughs> Obviously, is there anything else I can do? So what you want is a French restaurant in Brea called La Vie en Rose, just open, they are French, you speak French. Okay, well, let's go try. We go that there, she's speaking English for me because they're not speaking English. And the general manager said, well, I don't care if he speaks French, I don't care if he speaks Italian, I don't care if he knows the professional business 100%. He doesn't know speak the English, the only position is a dishwasher. Ah. My sister was embarrassed to translate it to me. And I look at her, I was like, what's the dishwasher? Say, washing dishes in Italian. Say, oh, cool. She said, hey. <laughs> So really, so you were a dishwasher for initially. I love it. Well, you got to do what you got to do, right? So you're like, making some money. I was happy dishes, to work in America in a French beautiful restaurant. After two days, I got the, my first promotion, busboy. Hey, I was so excited because to be a busboy, I was able to see customer and see the food on the plate. You know, because that's, my job is professional way that I've done, right? Decide also to be in the kitchen. But uh, on the front of the house, it's huge thing. After one year, I was a promoter as a waiter. After three years, I was a general manager. I love that. That's it. So what? You just, you stay. Mama must have been so upset, she, right? Over in Italy, she, she wouldn't be able to see you. So what did I, you do? That when I, you were working? I call her <laughs> yeah. on Sunday, only on Sunday, because it used to be $3.50 a minute. Then $3 a minute. I did not have money. I mean, I used to call for my sister, landline, talk to my mom for five, six minutes. That's it. And I go to see her once every year and a half, two years. That's it. But That's it. my mom, the day I left, when I thought I was going to America, my father was mad. My father said, you didn't ask for my approval. I said, dad, if I ask your approval, you will tell me no. But when I told my mom, my mom cried. She said, I'm sad because you're leaving but I'm happy because you got to be with your sister. Yeah. She was taking, story. she was happy. She was happy the fact that then I was keeping company to my sister because my mom loved seven children. You know? She loved mm -hmm. me the most, obviously, but my other brother. Oh, I, I know that, Bruno. I mean, look at the, look at the uh, and, and when she came here, obviously, years later, she stayed with you and she must have been so proud of your restaurant by then, right? Uh, well, you, know, you know, the, one of the reasons then I rebuilt the restaurant because years ago, she came, the first time she saw the White House when I owned it, she was on the second floor and she was doing a little dance. I own the restaurant, I own the restaurant. And it was so <laughs> funny to hear my mom is the most humble woman in the world, you know, farmer, shepherd. She was nine years old, working as a shepherd herself with my, with my grandfather. I mean, when I say, mom, the restaurant is yours, so she did a little dance. I mean, just the memory to have her dancing in my restaurant, I have to rebuild it, I say, yes to the memories to be in it. There's something about the Italian mamas, because my mom has passed, and I think about her many, many times a day, and so much of what I do is fueled by her, the same way that Caterina fuels you, you know, she's inside of you. I think this is why you can't stop, Bruno. Before Let's talk she passed, I used to Skype her every single morning, first thing I do. 
And then it's cheap, it's free. I was able to stay 30 minutes on the phone. I always say, the day I met the person who invented Skype, I give a French kiss because the, can you imagine to be able to see your mom every day? I the know. phone only once a week, three minutes only. I mean, I was able to spend 30 to 40 minutes on Skype every morning before I go to work. Oh, that's beautiful. We tried to teach my parents. They couldn't figure it out. So fortunately, at least I would talk to them on the phone. But that was always very difficult. They're like, wait, wait, how can I see you? You're in California. We're over in Florida. I said, don't worry about it. Just come visit for a month or two. And that's what we would do. Let's talk a little bit about, um, uh, about what else that you're doing. The Welcome Home Program. You also have something, uh, the Anaheim Union High School District, right? A hospitality program. We talk a little bit about that. And then we're going to talk about yeah. San I mean, the feeding, feeding the kids it was my first program of Katerina's Club. But I realized then a lot of those families, I said, why those families live in the motel room? I was trying to understand because I didn't know why. Then I started to investigate. People say, well, you have a prostitution, drug addict, drug dealer, but you also have a very poor family, a very good family who live in a motel room. I said, why they live in those motels? He said, well, because they don't have the first and last month of deposit to move out. It's like, ah, huh. yeah, because the motel room is not cheap. You have to pay daily rate. I don't know the are, are, they, are they paying a daily rate or are they being assisted? Because I, who can afford, I can't afford a hotel on a daily rate. I no, mean, motel, motel, motel rate. You then, when I started the program, it used to be like $30 a night, $35 a night. That means $12, $14, $1,500 dollars a month. Now it's more $18 to $2,000 a month. But then it was, I mean, the people was able to afford the rental fee to a small apartment with their family, but they did not have the deposit. I mean, right. uh, qualified the first family, family of six, mom, dad, four kids, live in a motel room for 12 years. Think about it. 12 years in one bedroom. And when I figure out that, that was ridiculous and shame in our country that we have people live in one room 12 years with close to next to drug addict dealer, drug dealer, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I talked to the family and said, what happened if I pay you the first and last month deposit? Are you capable to pay your rent fee after? I said, yes, well, that's my only promise, the deposit. I moved the right, because, they, because they, they have no savings. I mean, you know, exactly. so I'm sure you, I'm sure you vet them to make sure that they could at least help hold up an apartment, right? Yeah, we need us to see their paychecks for six months. They need to make sure they clean, don't drug, don't put it, stuff like that. But what we do, we qualify them. They have to have children, you have to have no kids. I don't move you. I move you for safety of the kids from those bad area. I mean, after I move that, I start to move them every two weeks, one family. And uh, we just moved one family last week, a woman by herself. She was on the verge to be homeless because she had to be evicted because she didn't have the first and last month to move out. We pay off first and last month to move out. This was family number 250. Every wow, oh my gosh. Family. And this is called Welcome, sorry, welcome, sorry, home. welcome Home. Welcome Home Project. And also the hospitality program. That's another another program you've got, right? You're, yeah, you're helping. That's, in fact, I work very close with Anaheim School District because a lot of the kids when they're teenagers, they cannot go back to boys' girls' club. If you can right. go to the club, you can be on the street, on the parking lot. There's not a great environment. So well, maybe we should teach them how to work. I mean, work since the age of 15, myself, 14. Right, I right. I mean, I do a three-month class with Anaheim student from the school district. We teach them uh, the people they decide to be chef or to be on the dining room. We divide them. My own crew teach them to be a chef, a waiter, busboy, dishwasher. We do three-month program. We graduate it. We help them to find a job. But after that, I'm taking 10 students for three months on the training, work with customer in my restaurant. But they have to change. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's incredible. You, yeah. You're really setting these kids on a path for their lives. Bro, this is beautiful. Yeah. This is beautiful. Like I said, sainthood. I really am not kidding. I'm now going to, every time I write on anything you do, I'm going to put saint. Because that's what I, that's what I have to say. Hey. Um, a couple of things. Um, it's very exciting that we've established a little Italy in Los Angeles, you know. Um, and we want to invite you to come and, and spend time with us there. And maybe even open a little restaurant there. I mean, sometime in your future. Wouldn't that be exciting? 
I'm already busy. Thank you so much. But I can come over anytime you like. Yeah, that would be really, really exciting. But, um, you know, what do you have to say about the Italian spirit and the people who came over? You know, many of the Italians who came through San Pedro, you know, they were uh, fishermen and uh, very much like in the southern Italy area. I mean, there's a, there's a large concentration of Italians there. Yeah, I've been there um, a couple of times. I can see a restaurant every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Italian people there, yeah. Yeah, so um, what do you say about the, the, not the Italian spirit only, but the spirit of when people come to America, Italians who come to America and make my, a great living in... My great-grandfather came to America in 1890 mm. to New York because obviously he was trying to make some money with that money, he was able to stand at home and buy some sheep and some cow. And I mean, in the blood of an Italian who came to this country to look for opportunity, I think America will not exist without the Italian. That is what my philosophy is. I mean, my great grandfather is one of them who came to New York to work, stay three, four years, be able to get money, buy cow, buy sheep, and start his own life in Italy. And that's where my grandfather and my mom came from after that. I mean, the Italian community is well known around the world to a traveler. I mean, we are, I don't think there's any more traveler than Italian to be uh, put some things. A little Italy is everywhere. I mean, LA would be amazing to, to see that because the Italian community, they are very well, well together. I mean, uh, I call Italy every morning. All my family live there. And with the coronavirus, I'm concerned about my family. Uh, Verona is only an hour drive from Milano. Uh, the, where the epicenter of uh, coronavirus to the, is there. I mean, uh, we are so close to each other. I mean, my mom and dad was good to, to put brother and sister together, but the community of Italian people is, uh, is love, passion, yeah. food. Yeah. I mean, uh, like you mentioned earlier, when you sit down for lunch, it's five hours lunch, it's not half hour. You know, if you do a Christmas lunch, it's 12 hours, you know. There's no doubt. And it always seems like there's more and more people filling the table. Um, so also I'd like to encourage people to pick up your book, The Power of Pasta. That's a beautiful yeah. book um, that's still out there in print. And um, I don't know, Bruno, we'd love to thank you uh, for being an honorary citizen uh, of uh, Little Italy, Los Angeles. We're excited about- No, it's, uh, a, it's, a, it's a talk about Italian, my friend. It's like, I, I have a, I'm lucky to have met some of the most amazing world famous Italian people. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, before I let you go, let's talk a little bit about some of the famous people that have walked through your restaurant. Okay, well, probably no most, the most famous person I had a chance to give her a kiss two times. Met her two times. I got the chance to be best friend with her son, is Sophia Loren. Oh. When you meet Sophia Loren, you meet her the Statue of Liberty of Italy. Absolutely. And the day, the day of the fire, she called me personally to say, I'm behind you. Be strong. And everything to give me encouragement to have Sophia Lauren think about Sophia Lauren to call you to encourage you because she saw on TV that you lost the restaurant. That is what Italian is all about. Yes, Roberto Baggio, Roberto Baggio, the most famous soccer player of Italy, he did the first page of my book, text me every week. Alessandro Del Piero, which is a Juventus Italian national team soccer player, which just opened a restaurant in Beverly Hills, unfortunately, it's closed like me, it's called number 10. But Alessandro Del Piero is also an amazing Italian human being. I mean, Andrea Bocelli, he came to my restaurant, he loved my food too. I mean, I have so many Italian people, I met Pavarotti, obviously, before he died. The Italian men that I met and I share, they are not star or famous, they are just Italian good People. That's what I love about our Italian community. They don't have the nose up to the hair. They are mm -hmm. kind and nice. They look the name I mentioned: Sofia Loren, Roberto Baggio, Andrea Bocelli, Alessandro Del Piero, and more and more and more. I'm just like, wow, you know, like that is a kind people, nice people. The, the Italian love, this kind of community, the Italian passion that we have. Give us petto spaghetti, a good glass of red wine. We are happy. Forget, <laughs> about the, forget about the corona, you know. Absolutely. And next time uh, Andre comes to your restaurant, would you let me know? Because I'd love to show up. I think he's lost. <laughs> I listened to him perform on Easter, and my heart just melted. And, of course, we saw him last year at the bowl with his son. So talented. Yeah, so, he honor, uh, they honor him at Paramount Studio from a CME Foundation 
she honored him and she honored me on the same day. Uh, she, was not, she was honoring people love their father. Andrea loved his father because when he got blind, his father was a big part yeah. of his life. And they honor me because they feel like I was a father of 5,000 kids, right? Obviously in a good way. And uh, I mean, I had the chance to talk and met him and uh, almost uh, also Elvis Presley's wife was there, Priscilla and everything. But uh, I had a chance to meet some of the most famous people around the world. I and mean, then I feel like the Pope, as uh, you know, already mentioned it. It's already, I feel like, but all those Italian people in America, they are really love, full of passion, full, full of love, you know. Well, they love you, Bruno, for all you do. I can't thank you enough for taking the time because I know as soon as we're done here, you're running over to the restaurant and you're actually helping to prepare the meals for literally thousands of people this afternoon. I love you, Bruno. Thank you so much for coming on with us. Thank, thank you. you. And could you give a shout out to your foundation and how people can look you up? Sure. Uh, if you cannot find me, because people just remember Katerina, so go to Anaheim White House restaurant, look at my site. Because Katerina's Club is there. You press Katerina's Club, which is www.katerinasclub.org. This is my uh, foundation name. I mean, uh, look for Bruno Serato. You will find Katerina's Club somewhere because it's everywhere next to me. Everywhere. Thank you for everything you're doing. You're and viva just, la pasta. Viva la pasta. And you're just such a, such a wonderful human being. Like I said, sainthood. So uh, thank you, everybody, for being uh, on our podcast today, uh, Little Italy of Los Angeles. Um, I am Deborah Zara Cobelt, an honor to present Bruno Serrato, and um, we will see you next time. Thank you, Bruno. Much love to you. Ciao. Bye-bye. Ciao.